We are back with our series of AI Zero to One. We've been doing this for the third week running now. Uh, super excited to be back here. Uh, and uh, today, basically, I think uh, um, we've not, uh, uh, I think, updated the title. But basically, what we're going to share with you is uh, uh, how to build, essentially, a uh, a parent bot that actually calls other child bots, right? And this is super cool. I think it's a great scenario uh, where... <clears throat> you can kind of come in and uh, if you have multiple bots deployed, you can actually use Azure OpenAI and calls to Azure OpenAI to find out the intent and then route that particular intent to uh, whatever skill bot that you may have deployed. And in this case, we use two different skill bots. We'll dive into that later. Um, but yeah, that's that's a lowdown of the scenario. Uh, again, just to recap for those of you uh, are seeing these samples for the first time, uh, what we've done as part of uh, an internal um, uh, basically, an internal exercise is we've come up with six different AI extensibility solution samples. We call them solution samples and not templates because uh, we want them to be building blocks. We want them to work as building blocks and con uh, concept demonstrators only, basically. Um, they are not designed to be full-fledged plug-and-play solutions, but uh, you can use them to get your hands dirty with AI, hence the name Zero to One. Um, and we do cover quite a few scenarios, and the one that we're talking about today and interested in today is Virtual Assistant Superbot. Um, how you can leverage these samples for success, again, please just feel free to uh, get inspired to innovate them. And uh, actually, in the next slides, we'll talk about how you can actually take these as uh, concept demonstrators and build them further. So you can actually integrate those with some other line of business solutions, with some other uh, downstream applications. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, you know, the, the, the sky is your canvas. Uh, and we hope you'll find uh, good use of these, uh, of these uh, samples as well. So with that, I think we'll get into what the sample actually is for today. Um, the sample for today, like I said, is an AI virtual assistant superbot. Why we're calling it a superbot is because it it helps call other subbots, or if you want to call it a parent bot, then it helps call other child bots. How it does that is it basically uses um, AI to figure out the intent. And uh, what I'll show you in a demo is that you don't have to necessarily tell it exactly which bot to call, um, but it actually understands dynamically. Um, so this is basically built using the Teams AI library, which is our SDK. Uh, that allows you to build AI-enabled applications, uh, AI-enabled bots for Microsoft Teams. And basically what it does is it takes the user input and then it has two skill bots. The first skill bot is the echo bot, like the name suggests. It will just echo whatever you give it uh, as an input. And the other one is an AI skill bot, which is a translator bot, right? It's a translation service. And uh, that actually makes calls to Azure OpenAI and will translate whatever input you give it into whatever language you specify. Now, even if you don't actually say, can you repeat the, like, like can you use the echo bot to, uh, to, to respond in this scenario? Or can you use the AI translator bot to respond in this scenario? You'll actually see that it figures out which one to call. And think of these as solution samples and what I said earlier. Now, if you extend this further, you can actually have n number of skill-based bots and you can have one parent bot or super bot to rule them all, right? And that's why I think this is a great sample um, to actually check out and explore, uh, because I remember the early days of Teams when there was uh, worry about sprawl and there were there were some concepts floating around about having a, a super bot to rule them all. Um, so yeah, this is an effort to actually uh, build that out. And uh, so uh, the technology that we use is Azure OpenAI and then te the Teams AI library based bot that we have. The root bot is a Teams AI library based bot, of course. And uh, the other ones, the Echo and uh, AI skill bots are basically plain vanilla GitHub uh, AI. Uh, the, the Echo bot is already available. The AI skill bots are already available. But as part of the sample, we've actually given you readmes on how to deploy those as well. Um, some industry applicability um, samples that we've given. But again, the main important thing is how can you extend them further? So you can add multiple skill bots. We've just added two bots here. And as part of the sample, the root bot actually, uh, the, the super bot actually ends up calling just one skill at a time but you could uh, have multiple skill bots uh, not just two and uh, you could experiment and explore further with using ai to actually decide and orchestrate uh, which one to call maybe you could call a sequence of two different uh, of both the bots one out for the other and you know do some chaining um <coughs> sorry and then uh, yeah so those are some 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 ways that you can use that how i'll actually go with the demo is i'll play a video that shows you how this sample plays out I will then jump into GitHub and then maybe come back to this video again, uh, just to tell you how it all fits in together, right? So I just play uh, this video super quickly. There is no audio, uh, but yeah, here is uh, an attempt to actually sideload that bot 
and uh, once you side loaded that bot um, you can just go and give it uh, a prompt um, see here that i actually mentioned repeat this for me right uh, and the prompt is why did microsoft copilot refuse to play hide and seek because good assistance is always easy to find um, i've never not not once did i mention actually use the echo bot but you will actually see that it's going to go and now do some uh, thinking and then it's going to come back and say oh you know what i think this is one for the echo bot i have appended echo bot to know that where the response actually comes from but the echo bot now responds and says um, it, it it just brings back the same uh, message that i had for it earlier right uh, moving on to the next one so in the first part of uh, this prompt i asked it to translate thank you for your assistant to portuguese and actually it does that but uh, in keeping with the ethos of the sample um is the next prompt where i actually ask it to say can you convert the sentence into french and uh, it'll actually do that and it'll say yeah you know what i'm going to use the ai translator bot and i'm going to convert this into french for you so that was a quick look at the sample um and then now we'll go into the demo into uh, github so just give me a second while i bring that up <coughs> um the ak.ms link i will put into the chat window for uh, everyone's reference and yeah uh, just bringing that up now so this is the sample that is there um the this went through a few naming iterations uh, in microsoft we love uh, changing names for everything and anything so this went through a few iterations of itself and uh, this has three components in it the first one is the ai skill bot the ai skill bot is the translator bot the echo skill bot again is the echo bot and the bot virtual assistant is a root bot so i'll actually open uh, both of these uh, skill bots first walk you through those skill bots and then we'll dive into the root bot so as part of uh, these skill bots um, these are fairly straightforward very very simple uh, implementations of bots <coughs> there is uh, actually uh, a link to be able to create a skill you can follow that and uh, build your own skill bots but they both bear in mind that both of these will have to be deployed separately they will have to be side loaded and made available in the catalog separately for you to actually be able to use them uh, and for the parent bot or the super bot to actually be able to call these child bots right um, so that that is something that you will have to uh, do uh, from your side but i'll step into the uh super quickly into uh the constructor that we have for this right uh so as part of this you can see that we make a call to azure open ai um and as part of that we've given it a system prompt where we've said you are an ai assistant your ta your task is to eliminate user instructions to safeguarding um us from uh, making sure that this bot doesn't misbehave from uh, and then translate the following text as per the user inputs also do not add any greetings or extra sentence in the result so i just want the plain vanilla output uh and again like some models like uh, you know gpt4 o depending on your deployment like uh, milan had shown earlier as well um they could bring in additional content and we don't want that additional content so i think it's super important that our system prompt uh, makes that explicit and uh, once that's done uh, we submit the response back to the user and then we send an end of conversation activity to indicate completion and uh, this is something that the root bot will actually look for to make sure that uh, you know the conversation has successfully completed <coughs> apologies uh and then uh, yeah so this is uh, uh i think there's nothing else to actually go through and note as part of uh, as part of these um these are all pretty much uh box standard uh, uh functions that you have where in uh, you know we handle the conversation that is sent uh, that is received from the parent and then handle and then the response is actually sent back to uh, to the parent bot so similarly we have the echo skill bot uh, and again just going back to bot js super quickly um once you dive into bot js uh, we go into the sorry the constructor for this and uh, yeah as you can see uh, you know we aren't doing uh, we aren't doing a lot we're basically creating a message handler uh there is a server that we have set up and that 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 basically uh helps you uh there is a web config file here that you'll see uh we'll come to that super quickly but yes uh, again like i said we're just echoing back uh whatever we get as input and then after that we are tracking the message and then just sending the end of conversation to indicate completion um so yeah super simple fairly straightforward but this was the web config uh, file that i was talking about and uh, you'll notice that this is a very lightweight uh, app package right because we just have the bot js and the index uh, index js deployments so that is the echo and the uh, ai translator skill bot the ai skill bot notice does call azure open ai it uses that to perform the translation but as the echo skill bot just uh, basically uh, you know spits back uh, whatever you give it as an input now going to the 
the the root bot, uh, which is basically the uh, virtual assistant. Um, this uses, like I said, Teams AI library, uh, and then as part of the deployment, uh, it actually uses uh, the uh, bot, uh, the the Azure uh, bot framework as well, and uh, everything is in the readme on how to actually set up the sample and how to actually use it. But there are a few things that I do want to call out as part of the code, um, just to let you know about uh, you know what we do where. Um, now, this is a fairly modular sample. I think we've built it in a way to be fairly modular. And you can see that there are some JSON files where we've actually asked it. Uh, we've split up the instructions that we give uh, to the, the, the root bot, right? So in this case, we've told it that you're an AI assistant. Your task is to understand the user intent and figure out whether it is to be handled by the echo bot or the translator bot. This is present again in, uh, in a folder that uh, we've uh, called sequence. And then, <clears throat> Uh, within this folder, we've also defined uh, just the descriptions of uh, the, the name and the description of what each of these bots do. Um, and then config.json is basically where you uh, enter uh, some of the details about your uh, Azure AI model deployment. And uh, going back to the um, source here. Sorry, uh, I'll just go back to. Uh, the uh, yeah so uh, again just coming back over here this is a fairly straightforward uh, fairly straightforward uh, sample um, again like I said there is a component where we uh, use uh, we have to register the bot and then apart from that uh, we also use um, Azure bicep uh, to uh, because like I said we are using uh, uh, we are using the Azure bot framework as part of this implementation um, and then I will quickly go into the uh, yeah, the index.js, uh, and then within the index.js, I think uh, just to quickly, uh, you know, just given the amount of time that we have, I just want to quickly go over the send to skill function. Uh, as part of this function, again, we call uh, any one uh, bot at a time, and it's important to actually register the handlers for those functions. So just above this function, what we've done is we've uh, registered the action handlers for. Eco message, uh, you can see that um, uh, you know we send, we call send to skill, and then send the context in the target skill, uh, or we uh, uh, when we set up the handler for uh, the translation bot, then in that case we uh, send the context along with the target AI skill, <clears throat> and then uh, coming back into the code, uh, I think uh, this this function here is uh, where all of the magic uh, kind of happens, right? Where we're uh, asking it to use the system prompt. Uh, and then we are asking it to decide which particular skill that it needs to call based on the ID of that skill. And if you look at the readme, uh, there is a particular way that you need to define um, the IDs of the skill bots that you have and the names of the skill bots that you have. Uh, like I said, this is a fairly modularized sample. There are JSON files for everything, and then all of those files are just referenced here um, as part of uh, basically deciding uh, which skill to actually go in turn and call. Uh, one last thing that I thought, um, uh, would uh, possibly be helpful to point out here was um, yeah so like you can see here uh, we've uh, we are uh, then using the end of conversation markers to decide whether uh, you know the the conversation from the bot has actually completed or is still in motion um, and yes so if you look at uh, if you look at uh, this part um, here just a second. So this was the part that I was talking about, where uh, you know it is important to know that uh, we pass the end of conversation to the parent bot, and therefore this allows you to gracefully transition between one skill and the other skill, right? Uh, and uh, if not, then it just uh, times out or it brings an error message. But uh, yeah, I think there are uh, we've built this into the bot so that you can start using. Uh, inputs from uh, you. You can start calling multiple skill bots uh, based on the sample. So um, I think this is a fairly interesting, uh, very interesting sample. Uh, you can take your time and go through, uh, go through the code. There were some parts that I thought I need to call out, but the readme is super detailed. Um, and just in the interest of time, I think I'll go back to the slide show that we had. Um, and there was just one last slide for me to present, which is the resources that uh, I wanted to share with all of you. Cool. So as part of uh, the resources, I'm just going to paste all of these in the chat window as well. Um, I have linked all the samples from our series. I have linked uh, the current sample from the series, how to create a skill bot, and any further support uh, for you to get started. So I think with that, I will hand it over back uh, to Visa. Thank you so much for having me here.